Galit Goldfarb. I'm so happy you joined me today. Today I'm going to be talking about a few nutritional deficiencies that may cause behavioral problems in children. Now sometimes the child doesn't want to eat certain foods or they do lots of exercise. Sometimes they may like certain dishes and they keep eating them again and again and again and they don't want to try anything different. So these behaviors may cause nutritional deficiencies. So it's good to know uh, how to recognize these nutritional deficiencies so that we can supplement them with either foods or supplements that have these nutrients in them. So let's get to it. The first one is an amino acid deficiency. That's a deficiency in protein. We have 10 essential amino acids and if we do not get them, then we will suffer from a protein deficiency. Now, a protein deficiency will cause your child to feel, to have foggy memory and feel sluggish, very, very tired. And also they will, they will not be in a very good mood. Uh, they will want to, it, it causes behavioral difficulties, sometimes even hyperactivity in children. And you really want to make sure that they're getting sufficient protein because if they do, don't get it from the diet, then their body will start to break down muscle tissue, which we do not want. So how do we make sure that the child is getting enough protein on a plant-based diet? A plant-based diet is so full of protein from plants, including nuts, seeds, but mainly legumes. Legumes are rich in protein. You have um, beans, so many types of beans. Surely you can find a bean that your child likes, even white beans with tomato sauce on rice, whole grain rice, certainly will fulfill all of their um, uh, protein needs as well as all of the lentils. Also green leaves are also rich in protein. So if they like green leaves, that's great. And if they don't, you can just add them to a shake, mix them up, and then they add some fruits inside and then they'll be eating the green leaves without, um, if they don't like the taste, then without much of the taste. So that's how you get rid of a protein deficiency. The next common deficiency is ch in children is magnesium. And magnesium can actually cause very aggressive behavior in children, violent behavior, and and um, they won't they won't be sleeping much as well. You'll be noticing that they're waking up much earlier than the other people in the family, and um, you'll want to make sure that they're getting enough magnesium. It makes them also more sensitive to other children. So sometimes children with a magnesium deficiency will um, be more whiny. They they'll. Um, they'll be crying more, um, they're more sensitive to what other people tell them as well. And they're very irritable. So um, how do we supplement for, nutri uh, for um, magnesium? Pumpkin seeds are rich in magnesium and so are Brazil nuts and um, soybeans as well. Sesame seeds are very, very rich in magnesium. They're also very mag uh, rich in many other um, nutrients, which we'll get into later. Um, as I said, also uh, dark green leafy vegetables. So like you did before, you can add them to, um, to make them into a shake. You can add them into a food processor, add some uh, fruits, apples, bananas, and then they'll be getting their green leaves, which are rich in magnesium. Also brown rice. If you um, uh, uh, supply your child with um, brown uh, grain uh, with whole grains then they will be getting a, uh, sufficient magnesium if it's together with the other magnesium rich foods also avocado is very very rich in magnesium and so are almonds so you have plenty of things to choose from to get sufficient magnesium and um, it helps in the absorption of magnesium b6 so all of these foods especially the whole grains are very rich in the b vitamins as well so the next deficiency that children are is very very common in children and not only in children it is very common around the world in adults as well is an iron deficiency which causes anemia now an iron deficiency actually changes the chemistry of the brain's neurotransmitters and it can have very long lasting effect if it's not um, supplemented on in time and it's very easy just make a blood test have your child um, go through a blood test and it will determine if they have sufficient iron levels now uh, how will you notice if your child is deficient in iron you will see that they are very uh, less socially responsive it can actually cause suicidal tendencies in children and in adults if it is severe so make sure they are getting sufficient iron not only that um, it, it causes them depression it causes them um, lifelessness really you will notice that if they don't feel like getting out of bed you will know that they may have an iron deficiency also hair loss um, 
you will start to see lots of hair on their comb. Um, this is an, also an indicator of an iron deficiency. Now, uh, how do you supplement with iron? You also have iron in pumpkin seeds, in soybeans. Really, these are really superfoods that have very much in them. Also, cashew nuts are very, very rich in iron, as well as the white beans, the dark leafy green vegetables. Um, they are also, uh, most of them, not spinach, they, they do have the iron, but some of them it's found in an inabsorbable form. So spinach doesn't have the, will not supply sufficient iron. Also um, oatmeal has iron and quinoa has iron, as well as supplement, uh, taking them together with vitamin uh, C which helps in the absorption of iron. Now, if you wanna take a supplement, um, make sure that you take one that doesn't cause constipation. It's call, called iron bisglycinate, which can, is also named as gentle iron, which can be taken. And if you take your, vitamin, uh, your iron supplements, do not take them together with uh, dairy products because dairy products will hinder the absorption of iron. Now another supplement that you really want to look into is vitamin B12. Of course, if, if your child is vegan or vegetarian, you definitely want to supplement with B12 in the form of methylcobalamin, which is the best absorbed form under the tongue. There are also in drops that you can take. If your child is not, not a vegan or eating a um, pretty common diet, then you also want to have them checked for sufficient vitamin B12. It's also a very simple blood test that can give you this indicator. And if they are deficient, then definitely you want to supplement. Even once a week is enough uh, for certain people. And you will see that your child is so, uh, deficient in B12 if they have mental disturbances. For example, you will notice that they are blinking a lot. They, are also, they will also be depressed and they will have neurological dis dis other neurological disorders. Um, you will see them do repetitive behaviors. These are very, very common in people that are um, deficient in B12. But especially the blinking, it's very obvious. If you see someone blinking and blinking, then you know they may have a uh, deficiency of B12. The next nutrient deficiency is a uh, deficiency in omega-3 fatty acids, especially omega-3. There are two essential fatty acids, and these are omega-6 and omega-3s. We tend to get sufficient amounts of omega-6 fatty acids through our modern day diet. Omega-3, it is less likely that we are getting sufficient amounts. So your child really needs to have this nutrient, especially to learn. It is very, very noticeable if we don't have these, if we don't have sufficient essential fats in the diet to the learning process. But not only that, you will also see that they're, they have uh, dull hair, there is less moisture in the skin, they have brittle nails, and also you have um, waves on the nails. These can be signs of this deficiency and also signs of ADHD is very common in children that have this deficiency. It's very uh, easy to supplement with omega-3 fats on a plant-based diet. You get sufficient omega-3 in, in uh, all the sea vegetables. As well, That's where the fish get them, by the way. When they consume these sea vegetables, that's how they produce enough omega-3 fats. And they are also very common in walnuts and in seeds, chia seeds and uh, flax seeds especially. Now, this is such an important nutrient, um, especially for brain function and cognition, that they were added to formula milks when they noticed that babies that were not getting sufficient omega, uh, these essential fats, they had a lower IQ than children that were breastfed. Because even if the diet of a mother that is breastfeeding is insufficient, does not have sufficient omega-3 fats, her body will actually produce the omega-3 fats to ensure that her baby is getting enough. It is such an important and vital um, nutrient for us, especially that the brain is made of so much fat. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you want more content, you're welcome to join me to subscribe to this channel, as well as visit my blog on www.thegorilladiet.com. You have everything in the field of health and nutrition uh, to help support you on a healthy and uh, happy lifestyle. So thank you very much. See you soon.